<sighs> What's going on, YouTube fam? Unshaved Micah and his country sausage biscuit shooting another high adventure video. First thing, dawn's early light and our flag is still there. It is cold out. It is like 28 degrees. It is actually 28 degrees out. I have a gas station sausage biscuit here. Out chasing some middle of the winter cold water crappy. Hopefully today. Hmm. You guys tell me. Yeah, it doesn't. It smells pretty good. Not gonna lie, he's looking kind of pale and peaky. Hmm. Well, it's warm all the way through. That's good. Barely. You know what? For a fishing trip, this will do. This will do. It's been a few weeks since I've gone out and done some crappy fishing. Never fished this in the middle of winter. So we're going to find out if the piggies are still lurking or if they've shut down for the cold water. I don't know. I guess we'll find out together. I'll see you guys at the lake. Mmm. Oh my goodness. Absolutely gorgeous morning here on Lake Murray. Took out the fog rolling off the lake. It is so cold, but that lake is still relatively warm. In fact, we're gonna find out just how warm it is here in a second. Got my Hobie Mirage Outback kayak. It's gonna be nice. We're heading right over there to the bridge, only about 100 yards away, and uh, doesn't look like anybody's there so far, so. I've seen a bunch of people heading out to go striper fishing, and that's fine. That's not what we're gonna be after, so. Ooh. Hop in here and get ourselves pushed off and ready to go. Drop them down. There we go. Release the rudder. And we whew, are officially off. There we go. All right, guys. We're gonna start the day out with a couple little jigs. I actually had a subscriber send these to me. They are from a guy who makes jigs called Get Crushed Baits. And he's like, bro, you need to try these jigs. So I said, all right, I'll give them a go. So we've got these two tied on, got a little double rig set up. We're at our pilings. Nobody else is here right now, except, well, I do see a guy putting in over there. Got the down imaging on here. Not seeing a ton right off the bat. So it makes me a little nervous, but I'm just gonna have to see if there's anything down there. Let's find out for ourselves. Here we go. The first drop on the bottom. Give it a couple reels. And we're just gonna start drifting around these pilings. Jigging up and down. See if we can find some of those big winter pancakes here. Mm, starting to mark something on the bottom right there. I got some fish right next to that piling. Take a look at this. See that right there? There's gonna be some crappy right up in there. Right next to that piling. We got some stuff down there close to the bottom as well. Looking at that down imaging. We've definitely got some crappy down there. Now the trick will just be to see if we can get them to bite. That felt like a little bump right there. Sometimes when I jig up, it'll there'll be a little bit of resistance just for a brief second. And I think I think that's a crappy coming up and nibbling it. These crappy just kind of load on. They don't they don't smash it. They're not smashing it. Like that right there. Got him. Boom. Just load it on. Just load it on. It's the bottom one. Not a bad crappy to start the day. He'll go on the stringer if we can get him in. Yep, flip him in, nice. Nice little probably 10 incher right there. Boom, on the subscriber jigs. Nice little fish right there. Not very big, you know, hmm. I feel like I can do better. I think we're gonna let that one go. They have to be eight inches to keep. My guess is that's probably about nine. Man, that's a beautiful fish. It's probably about nine, but I think we can do better than that. We can go ahead and drop in back in. I'm gonna gamble on myself here and say that we can get a little bit bigger. There's a bite. Got him. Got him, just loaded on. This feels like a solid fish right here. Yep, okay, this is a little bit better. It's a little bit better. There we go. On that bottom one again. Swing him aboard. Nice. That one will go on a stringer. Ah, check that out right there. There's a good 11 inch or so, maybe close to 12. Boom. 
that's what I'm talking about right on that lime green one of the reasons I'm using this uh, sartreuse uh, a lot of the locals like the sartreuse colors and uh, the guy get crushed bait sent me uh, like three or four different varieties but I thought I'd start with the sartreuse which seems to be kind of like the local uh, the local flavor and so far it's producing that'll go on the stringer perfect there we go perfect first fish on oh lively little devil that sun's coming up and these fish seem to be uh, waking up a little bit as well nice guys let's see if there are any piggies down there though that's a solid fish but it's winter time and a lot of the people i've talked to they say you want to catch your trophy crappy this is the time of year to do it see if we can get a bigger one all right let's get back down there all right, big pancakes, where you at? I know there's some pancake crappy down there. The state record in South Carolina is like a five and a half pound crappy. Oh, there's a bite right there. So, I mean, I'd love the state record, but shoot, I'd settle for like a two pounder, three pounder. I've definitely never caught a crappy that size before. Oh, there's a bite right there. When I lifted up, something was on there. That's how light this bite is. There's a bite. Got him. Got him. Feels like a solid fish. About time. About oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh wait, what is this? Like a big old like war mouth. Check this out. Check this out, guys. Oh, whoa. What in the world? That's totally like a mix between like a crappy and a brim. That might even must be like a a crappy and a shell cracker. That's what I'm wondering. Because it's got like some yellow. Like a yellowish tint of a shell cracker in there. That's cool. Huh. If somebody knows what that is. Comment below. I'd love to know if somebody's caught something like that before. But it's probably about 8 inches long would be my guess. Good and fat. We'll be able to fillet that up. I want to give that a try. Maybe I have a new fish for the first time. That's pretty cool. There we go. Drop them on there. Let's get back down there. Sweet. That was a really good fight. I thought I had a nice size crappie on. But those shell cracker fight pretty good as well. So you get a mixture there between shell cracker and crappy, if that is indeed what it is. Get yourself a good fighting fish. There he is. There he is. This is a good fish. Oh, this is a weighty fish right here. This is a good fish. Oh yeah, 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 slab crappie. Oh come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh come on, baby. Come on. Glad I brought the net this time. Come here. Yes. Oh, 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 oh yes. That is what we're after right there. Alright. Alright. Check this fish out right here. Look at that. Look at that crappie. I'll bet that's a 13-inch crappie right there. Nice and fat. Beautiful fish. It's been slow, guys. It has been a really, really slow morning. And so finally to get a fish like that. And they're bigger. I mean, that's I mean that's a good fish. That's going on the stringer for sure. But, uh, I mean, they get a lot bigger than that. I knew there were some pancakes down there. We got one of them. Let's see if we can get any bigger, though. I'm after it. Let's do it. He just came up and boom. That's all it was. That's all it was. This little little green jig right there getting it done double rig action oh, I finally brought my net I can't tell you guys how many times I've come out here with the whole kayak loaded down with stuff and not have the net with me there's one got him boom boom come on doesn't feel shabby either doesn't feel shabby at all oh yeah yeah that's another nice crappy that's a Let's get in the net worthy. Oh, 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 no, 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 no. Don't you even think. Oh, yeah, this is a nice one. Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh, he got the top part. Got the top part. Look at that fish right there. That's another nice one. Boom. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. Right in the top of the mouth, right where you want it. Oh, man. That's a pretty fish. 
that's a really pretty crappy that's about that's i'd go i'd call that a pancake crappy i'll bet that's probably about 12 and a half inches or so 13 inches maybe not quite as big as the last one we caught eh, he's close he's close but really good size that's a good filleting size right there take that all day long twice on sundays we are putting together a nice little stringer here ladies and gentlemen right in the middle of winter not doing bad at all check this out look at that <laughs> oh man those, those are the most recent two crappy that's the small one we got this morning but uh, look at these guys right here pulling up some slabs starting to pull up some slabs for sure that's really nice that's really nice yeah, that second one that's the second one right there not quite as big as this guy right here but still two really nice fish all right let's get back down there there are a bunch of seagulls hitting the surface over there the striper will um, they'll push the bait fish up to the surface and that's how the striper fishermen look for them. Of course, there are no striper fishermen around right now, or else there'd be like four or five boats all over there. And the birds just keep dive bombing the water. So you know the striper are just sitting right under that school of bait right there. That's pretty cool. We're gonna have to come out and do that sometime. We'll have to come out, especially now that I just got myself a boat. I have to. Uh, out and do some striper fishing. I don't feel real comfortable going out in kind of the open water in the kayak, especially when like the boats are buzzing around, you know, trying to get in on those schools. I'm just just too small of a vessel. Uh, of course, I could I could do it now because there's nobody out here. Typically, I see at least four or five striper boats work in the area, but not today. I think it's too cold. By that piling doesn't feel very big because he's not. Still though, they're still biting, still biting, just a little slow. There you go. Be a boat snack right there. There he is. Boom! Just loaded on. Oh my goodness, guys! It has been a quick minute. A quick minute. And eh, it's not a bad fish. I'm just waiting around. And we load into another one. That is technically a keeper, probably about nine inches. I actually switched up my jig setup. I've got an ultra chartreuse jig on the top made by a local guy. Uh, and then I actually still have one of the uh, jigs that the guy sent me. I just switched to a darker green, almost kind of matches the crappy look there, you could kind of see. But that's technically a keeper, but it's kind of small. I think we're gonna drop him back in. <laughs> there he is, aha floated it right past. I could see him down there. I could see him. It feels like a solid fish. Yeah, this is a keeper crappy. This is a keeper. I can see him down there. And I was like, come on. There we go. We're cooking, man. Still hitting. They're still down there. I can see him down there. That's probably a nice 11 incher right there. And I'm just like, I gotta get him to bite. Sure enough, boom. Right there. Boom. Nice. We got a good full stringer today. Good full stringer today. All right, guys. We are going to go ahead, pack it in for the day. I caught a few more, but nothing really. No pancake size ones. So, I guess we'll just have to say that for another time. I did, however, find out that this guy right here that we caught earlier this is called a war mouth now he's pretty large he's probably i don't know nine inches long or so it seems like a pretty nice size uh nice size brim i think they're in the brim family if i'm not mistaken 
but uh, that's a nice little fish right there. Now, I have never eaten one of these before, so I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this guy home along with the rest of our crappy, and we're gonna do a little taste test. I'm pretty excited, but check this out. Could have added more to the stringer today, but I was really just making sure we targeted nicer fish. But look at that. That's a not a bad looking stringer for middle of January right there. I'm not complaining at all. That is pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and get these guys back. And then we'll go ahead and do a little cooking up at my house. All right, back at my house. Gonna be doing a little taste test here. Got our crappy and our warm mouth. We're just gonna flay both of these up. This warm mouth should be filletable here. Obviously much smaller than the crappy. This crappy is one of the smallest crappy we caught. But still, I mean, I don't know. I've seen these before. This is like a really nice sized one. Let's see if we can work some filleting magic here. Nice and easy. Oh yeah, some white looking meat in there. I'm really excited to do this taste test. This should be a lot of fun. I have never eaten a warm mouth before. i go lay that open just like that. Now we should be able to cut that rib cage out. Just slide under those ribs. All right, oh, oh no, no, I oh, did not want that to break off. I think we can still get this though. Slide right under the meat. Oh man, my RuneScape cooking skills just went up a level or two. Look at that. Oh mama, look at that. Boom, I'm the man. I'm not gonna lie, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it, I'm the man. I am the man. My, my, my filleting skills have gotten so much better over the past probably year. Filleting is just one of those things like you're not going to be good at it right at first. You're just going to have to keep filleting fish in order to get better at it. I look back at some of my older videos like some of my trout videos when I was filleting some of my trout. Oh my heavens. It was, uh, it was a little rough going but that's just kind of how you learn. You just kind of you have to learn on the go. Almost there. Boom, all right. There are our two fillets. Fillets, whatever. I just like saying fillet. There is an L in there, so I pronounce it. There we go. I mean, not a ton of meat, but I'll take it. It'll be enough to do a good taste test. Now let's get this crappy done. Finish. Look at that. Even the smaller crappy. I mean, look at the fillet size difference. No real comparison, but we'll definitely be able to tell which one we like more. All right. Now to do a true taste test, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cook these in a little salt and pepper that I got here in some butter. Just to start out, probably do like one filet a piece. So we're gonna come over to my Pit Boss Pro Series grill here. Get this fired up. There we go. Turn it down low. Take our butter, throw a dollop in there. Then over here, what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take some salt. I think we'll use the bigger filet so I get a little bit more of a taste. We'll take the warm mouth filet, a little salt on that side, as well as just a little pepper. Same thing with our crappy. A little salt and pepper. All right, I'm gonna take our warm mouth filet, we'll go on right there. Take a crappy filet and set it on the other side right there. And we'll hit the other sides with a little salt and pepper as well. Perfect. Let that cook in the butter, that won't take long. Those are thin filets. And we'll be ready to give it a taste test. Oh, yeah, look at that golden brown. Gorgeous. All right, and it doesn't take long for this to cook because they're so thin. Oh yeah, look at that. Golden brown on both sides. Crappy should be the same way. Oh yeah, crappy's flaking. Oh yeah, check that out. Let's go find out which one we like better. Oh, hi, Poppy. Poppy is our resident one-eyed cat. Come here, come here, come here. 
Poppy lost an eyeball when she was a kitten. The former owners of this house actually left a pregnant cat here. So like two weeks after we move in, this cat named Tessa has like five kittens. Poppy was one of them, right Poppy? Poppy then like a month later loses an eyeball somehow. So we decided to go ahead and keep Poppy. We got her eye taken care of. It was like either have her eye taken out or she's gonna die. So we had her eye taken out and stitched back up. We adopted the mama cat and the other kittens out actually. And we kept Poppy because I kind of felt bad for just the one little one eyed cat. And I was like, well, she needs some loving. Needs to be taken care of, right Poppy? Right? So we called her Poppy because <laughs> her eye popped out. So seemed like the right name. So anyway, now she's our little indoor outdoor cat who loves eating lizards. Don't you? You like a good lizard meal. You like it here. I tell you what, you want a crappy meal? Here. You want a piece of crappy? I'll, I'll take a little piece of crappy off here. Here. Would you like this? Here. Want some crappy? Oh, come on. That's a perfectly good piece of crappy. You probably want it raw, don't you? I don't blame you. All right, here we go. Check that out. Little bit of each. I think what we're gonna do is start with the warm mouth. Actually, first we're gonna say a quick prayer. Thank the Lord for our day. Well, I could tell you this, it smells good, even with just the butter and the salt and the pepper. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do the warm mouth first. Mmm. First, get, get, a, get a load of this. Look at the per, I mean, I cooked this to perfection. Look at this right here. Like a perfect golden brown on the outside. Here we go, warm mouth. This is first time ever on my channel and for me. I've never eaten warm mouth before, so here we go. Definitely flaky. It tastes good. I mean, it's got a good flavor. I'm gonna get a few bites of it here. Almost, almost kind of reminds me Almost of like a bass type flavor. Yeah, it's almost kind of like a cross between bass and, but the flakiness of like a bluegill. Last piece right there. Mm. That's delicious. That's a really good fish. Now, for the crappy. Actually, you know what? I need to cleanse the pal palate here. One second. All right, we're back. Cleansing the palate with a classic Southern drink, cheer wine. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> that's good. All right. Ooh, a little. All right. Now for the crappy. And we're gonna get a nice hearty bit of meat here. I'm not gonna lie, that warm mouth was really good. So this is gonna have to be good. You know, typically when I eat crappy, I fry it up. That's like the way God intended crappy to be eaten. But this, you know, here's my thought. Crappy is good, but it's better fried. I'd rather have crappy fried. This is all right. This is solid. The war mouth, here's, here's what it is. The war mouth meat itself has more flavor, I feel like, than the crappy does. The crappy goes really well with the breading, the fried breading, like the Louisiana, you know, breading that you put with it when you fry it up. It's like the perfect pairing. War mouth doesn't need to be fried. Crappy, I mean, you don't need to fry anything. But I almost feel like crappy, to get the best taste out of crappy, you have to fry it. But war mouth, there's a different flavor in the war mouth. It's almost like um, sweeter, almost. A sweeter meat, I would say. Maybe a more... Maybe a more, there's just more flavor to the warm mouth. That's like the best way I could describe it. The warm mouth just has a little bit more of a punch of flavor where you don't need to, you wouldn't need to fry it to like get the most out of it. All right, got some of our fish fry. Next, we're gonna try these fish fried up. Now this is my preferred method of eating crappy. This is, like I said, how God intended crappy to be eaten right here. So we're gonna take this bad boy I'm gonna drop him in our oil just like that. And we're gonna cook these separately. I don't want them cooked together in the oil because they'll definitely kind of mix together, I feel like anyway. And there's no real way to keep them separate unlike when you're cooking them in the butter in the pan. Just keep them on opposite ends of the pan. 
All right, looks like our crab is done. Go ahead and set him right there. Oh yeah, look at that, nice golden brown. A Little bit of dark brown on there, perfect. Now we'll go ahead and take our itty bitty warm mouth filet, drop him in there. That's not gonna take long to cook at all. And last but not least, our warm mouth. Looks like that's cooked to perfection as well. Nope. Some <laughs> you brought some Scooby snacks and out I with you. This is my little girl, Arabella. Hi. <laughs> you want to try some warm mouth and some crappy? Yes, please. All right. Let's see. So let's start with the crappy. All right. This time. Actually, you know what? Let's start with the warm mouth this time. Yeah. Here you go. There you go. <laughs> Ooh. Is it hot? Uh-huh. Uh-oh. Try right. it. You can take it out of your mouth. You know, it's been too hot. No. no. Fresh, fried, warm mouth. Oh, Bella's got to show you her piece as well. There you go, baby. Oh, it's not hot anymore. Mmm, that's good, isn't it? Hi, you've been to videos? No, yeah, right. Cheers. Pack is coming outside. Oh, there's a little dude coming out too? Mm. Mm -hmm. Man, that's a good flavorful fish, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That warm mouth, even fried, is really good. All right, have mm -hmm. some water. I'm going to have this. We got to cleanse our palate and then try the crappy next, all right? It does bear noting that I also lightly salted and peppered the fillets as well. Ooh, look at that nice crispy bit. Mm, there you it looks go. like chocolate. That made no sense whatsoever. Hey dude, come on out. You want to try some fish? Here we go. Yeah. Hey dude. You want, you want some crappy? Yeah. Here you go. Thanks. You're welcome. Good manners. Oh, you got Scooby Snacks too. <laughs> We both have Scooby Snacks. That crappie's really good. Mm. What do you think, Bella? Pretty good. Which one did you like better? Did you like the first one or this one? Mm. You like that one? See, I would disagree. That warm mouth was really good, guys. I, for me, personally, the warm mouth was better. Huh. You want to sit with me? Yeah. Here go. You want some more? Yeah. All right. The warm mouth just has a little bit sweeter flavor, just a little more flavor to the meat overall. Both are delicious. The crappy obviously is bigger and you get more meat, more bang for your buck with the crappy. The warm mouth is much smaller. You want a bite? But, uh, but man, I think I like the warm mouth better. Actually, Belly, you want that piece? Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Crocky, you want this piece? Yeah. You can just hold on to that. There you go. There you go. If you've had warm mouth before, tell me what you think. I personally actually like the warm mouth better, which kind of surprised me. I didn't think I would, but a little sweeter and I like it a little bit more. Do I need to go fry it some more crappy? Eh? All right, all right. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. And as always, I will see you in the next. I'll see you in the next one too. There you go.